Back in the earliest months of 2020, I was experiencing a pretty severe case of burnout. I was feeling anxious, overwhelmed, and at times despondent about the path that my life was on. So when the pandemic lockdown started, I accidentally discovered a method of reducing my anxiety and curing myself from burnout. It's now my favorite tool to recommend to my students and to my clients about how to reduce their feelings of overwhelm, help them regulate their nervous system and get themselves into the state of flow. So what's this magical cure for reducing anxiety? It's reading fiction. If you really think about it, Everything is actually just story. Stories are the most powerful tool that Homo sapiens have developed in order to understand the world around us. Our survival as a species depends on telling stories because stories transmit information, help us create a sense of safety, and build a common humanity that gives us that fundamental sense of belonging. And ultimately, all forms of human entertainment can be described as story. So when we read fiction, not only are we allowing our brains a little bit of an escape, an imaginative escape from the things that might trouble us in our daily lives, we are also activating the parts of our brain that are really curious about information that is going to help keep us safe and build that sense of belonging to a tribe. As I like to often say, our brains are prediction making machines. And what this means is our brains are just constantly telling us stories. When we're going through periods of time where we're feeling high levels of anxiety, stress, burnout, or even pain, it can be helpful to recognize that our brain has a specific story that it's telling us that might be based on stories we've heard from others in our surroundings, stories that we've had in the past in our lives, or even stories that we've absorbed from popular culture. I often think about how the first stories were probably stories told by ancient humans who were trying to build a sense of safety and belonging by sharing stories such as, hey, remember that time that Carl ate those berries from the other side of the river and then Carl died? That's why we never cross the river and we don't eat those berries. Humans live in a world where we are overloaded by information that's often transmitted to us in the form of stories. In this age of information overload, we can also use the power of stories to help us create an understanding of the world around us. In those early days of the pandemic, I remember reading a lot of stories about more challenging times in the past, such as the beautiful book Year of Wonders by Geraldine Brooks, which talks about a town that goes through the plague in the 1660s in England. And the town members decide that they are going to band together to essentially flatten the curve of the plague that is spreading through their town. It's an incredible incredible work of historical fiction and I remember reading it and having this sense of peace that this experience that I was going through where there was this scary disease, this virus that was spreading through the community and I didn't know what was going to happen to me or my loved ones, that this is something human beings have gone through many times in the past and that it often can be quite revealing of the beauty of human nature which is to rely on one another and to help one another and to ultimately have each other's back through difficult times. For some people, reading fiction is about escape. So reading a fantasy series or reading a novel that's set many, many thousands of years in the future or perhaps in another dimension. In this age of overabundant information and overabundant communication, Stories can be a way that we tap into our shared experiences, our shared and common humanity. I can recall a time in my life when I was experiencing a lot of sadness and grief, and at the same time, I was reading the novel Anna Karenina by Tolstoy. And I remember reading a scene about a character who was grieving, who was heartbroken, and he went out into the fields to cut the hay with these peasants who were working from sun up to sundown. Because he was so heartbroken, he was so sad, that he wanted to work his body so physically hard that he would fall asleep at night without thinking of his lost love. What reading that novel taught me is that human emotions are the same all throughout history. It doesn't matter if a story was written by a Russian man in the 1870s, I could relate to that experience 
of that character. In my opinion, reading fiction can actually be one of the best ways to regulate your nervous system. I talk a lot about entering into that ventral vagal state in my video on resetting your nervous system and polyvagal theory. I like to think of fiction as my secret tool for entering into the rest and digest state of ventral vagal. It might take a little while to get into it, and in fact, in my literature classes, I tell my students that it usually takes about 10 to 15 minutes before their bodies and their nervous systems, their minds can calm themselves enough in order to pay attention to the story, to sort of fall into that flow state that allows us to access the beauty of the work of the fiction that we're reading. And so I often tell them to surf the, those urges in the very early stages of sitting down to read something. I like to set a timer for 90 minutes because I use ultradian rhythms, our body's natural focus time limit of about 90 minutes in order to allow myself those 10 to 15 minutes of settling in, calming my nervous system, and paying attention to the story. And then I notice that after that 10, 15 minutes of feeling that urge to get up or to distract myself or even to look at my phone, that I settle into that beautiful flow state where I can focus and I'm absorbed in the story and the world sort of falls away for the rest of the time. And then in this beautiful arc, I notice that when I'm coming up to about 80 to 85 minutes, my attention, my focus is starting to wane. I've sort of absorbed as much as I can in that moment. So the outcome of that is that we have this beautiful moment in our day where our body allows itself to calm the nervous system, to enter into this ventral vagal rest and digest state. We experience the lovely effect of escaping into the world of a story. We see the beauty of language and what's possible to transmit information regardless of our background. We expand our horizons and possibly learn about another person's experience and possibly even another culture or another time period that we didn't know about before. I believe that it is in our DNA to hear stories. Ancient humans gathered around the fire to tell stories before sleep in order to connect, to reflect, and to protect themselves from the dangerous world outside of that circle. There's even research that shows that reading fiction can help adults build their empathy pathways in their brain and have more empathy for other humans. Anything that helps your nervous system enter into that ventral vagal state is going to help you in times of stress, overwhelm, anxiety, and burnout. Reading fiction helps to expand our horizons and make us have a better perspective on our own lives and what's currently going on, even if it feels like everything is the worst it's ever been. By reading a story, we can recognize that we are only in one chapter of what is hopefully Hopefully a very long book. And finally, my favorite reason for reading fiction to help reduce anxiety is that reading fiction creates a sense of belonging. When we read stories and we resonate with those experiences, we can build a sense of being connected to others regardless of what's happening. That's exactly what happened to me. In those early days of the pandemic lockdowns, I was living alone, leaving my apartment, very infrequently, and yet I felt a greater sense of belonging than I had possibly ever felt in my entire life because I felt that as a society, as a community, we were all in this together. And reading fiction helped me to recognize and tap into those common emotions, the common humanity that unites us all. 